Maximizing your potential as a footballer and to find out how good you can actually become is the dream for millions of players around the world. Working hard and dedicating yourself to your football is a prerequisite for success, but we all know that by now, don't we? But even when we're already working hard, it always feels like we can do a little bit more and a little bit more to get that little bit closer to our dreams. But besides working hard, what more can we actually do? Today, I will go over nine ways to help you maximize your football potential. Throughout this video, there will be a wide variety of concepts that I'll discuss. Mindset tricks, lifestyle changes, and training you probably have never done before. There will be something for every footballer to take away from this video. And the more of these different things that you are able to add together into your life and career, the quicker your progress will be, and the quicker you will realize your full potential. Let's begin. Number one, the habit of research. When you're working hard in training and you're pushing your body and your skills to the max, you're already doing better than most other players out there. However, when you also start to get into the habit of research, that's when things will really start to take off. But why is that? Because when you start to research more, when you start to learn more, the better decisions you'll be able to take on your training, your nutrition, your sleep, your recovery, etc. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you currently have zero knowledge on how sleep affects your performance. But you have heard that it may be important, so you start doing some research on the subject. You quickly find out the basics of sleep and you realize that, oh, I may not have been getting the amounts of deep sleep that my body needs and that is why I have felt these aches and pains throughout all of my body. Now you start to tweak your sleep schedule. And after a few weeks, you notice that these aches and pains have started to go away. And now you can start training harder, because you're not limited by the pain that you had before. All of this was possible simply because you got into the habit of doing research. There are many ways that you can do research. Just by being here and watching this YouTube video, you have already gotten started. Other ways could be reading books, analyzing high-level players, consuming scientific articles, or any other way that you can come up with. In the beginning, the most important thing is to not obsess too much over the source or the methods in which you conduct your research, but instead to just get started and as with everything else, over time you'll get better and better at conducting your own research. Number 2. The Cognitive Footballer After having played football for 17 years, I've come to learn that the biggest thing to distinguish players between different levels is their cognitive abilities. There's always a big emphasis that we should keep practicing our technical skills out on the pitch to hone our strength in the gym or to acquire more tactical knowledge or build a stronger mental mindset. But what actually acts as an umbrella over all of these is your cognitive ability, aka your brain. But you could argue that it could also be viewed as an entirely separate category. A category that you should definitely not neglect within your training. Football is a game that is always changing, players constantly move around, and the time and space that you have on the ball will always be different in different situations. And for us to be able to navigate in this chaos that is a football game, we must first be able to react and interpret this ever-changing environment, and then, through our understanding of the game, in combination with our cognitive ability, take the best decision possible. And that is really the biggest difference between the best players in the world and the rest. First, the ability to react to a situation and then being able to take the best decision possible in that given situation, but then also to be incredibly consistent in taking these best decisions over the duration of a 90 minute game. But how exactly do you train these cognitive abilities? There are several ways in how you can train your cognitive abilities, like your spatial awareness, your vision, your reaction, anticipation, concentration, etc. But the very best way to train these will always be to train as specific as you can, and that means playing as much football as possible. You can think of it like your brain collects all these different situations that you get yourself into during a game, and then the next time you get into a similar situation, your brain will go back to what it has seen before and use that as reference to be able to handle that situation again. And the more of these situations that your brain has seen, the better it will be at handling these situations in the future. But a problem with this is that it will not be possible to play football all the time. 
due to several different reasons like training by yourself or just not being able to handle the physical load. That's why there are things that you can do to train your cognitive abilities outside of football, but we will get to those later in the video. Number three, the guide. Working towards a professional contract can sometimes be a hard and lonely journey, and it will require you to do most of the heavy lifting yourself. That means taking informed decisions on how to train, which skills to focus on, or even deciding which your next club should be. A problem that comes with this is that we're only viewing our career through one lens, and that is our own biased perspective. That's when it's a perfect opportunity to acquire a mentor to help you. A mentor is someone that can assist you in your career through their expertise and their knowledge, and through that, guide you in the right direction and provide a third person perspective of your situation. It may be hard to find a mentor and you may not find one directly, but try to be on the lookout for potential mentors along the way. Now, I would love to be able to work one-on-one -on -one with you guys, but at this moment in time, it's just not possible. That's why I'm doing my best to act as a mentor throughout these videos where I can share my knowledge that you can hopefully take on board to help you get closer to realizing your dreams. Number four, consistency versus intensity. When you put in the work, you do want to challenge yourself and work hard to push your limits. However, it's important to understand and to learn that consistent effort over time beats intense effort every once in a while. Start to think of your training like a season, not just one game. Consistent effort allows you to steadily progress, avoiding burnout and fatigue. It's all about pacing yourself for the long run. Consistent effort also helps with building habits. Building habits is like mastering a new skill on the pitch. Consistency turns those drills and exercises into second nature. The more you repeat them, the more they will become a part of your game. I guess you have also heard about the 10,000 hour rule. Well, consistent practice is your ticket to reaching that milestone. Small, regular efforts add up over time and helps you become a better player bit by bit. Being a top-level footballer isn't just about what you do on the field. Consistency makes it easier to integrate your training to your lifestyle. It becomes a part of who you are, not just something you do once in a while. Number five, the five steps to success. Sometimes throughout your career, you will feel stuck. That is inevitable and part of the process. And that is just something that we have to learn to accept. However, you can always take action to make these periods as short as possible and as few as possible. But how do you do this? Well, to me, it's quite a simple process. I like to split it up into five smaller steps. Five steps that sooner or later will get you back on track and guarantee success. And those five steps are analyze, plan, program, action, adapt. We always start by analyzing our current situation to get a better understanding of what is going well, what is not going well, and what could be changed. After we've done that, we start to plan out in detail how we can implement different training and concepts into our careers to move on to the next level. The next step is to create some kind of program for that plan. So do we have a structured approach to follow, to make it easier for us to be consistent with what we have planned, and to make sure that we're working on the things that will improve our games the most. The fourth step is then to take action on the program that we have created by being consistent in our training and our overall life. The fifth and final step is then to always be able to adapt and change if things are not working. If you want to learn exactly how to set yourself up for success and create a plan, you can watch this video that I made recently that have become one of my most appreciated videos. Number six, the red car. I've recently been going through some psychology sessions with my mentor where we have discussed several important mental concepts. But one that really stuck with me was how all of us are really viewing the world through different lenses, but ultimately our own lenses. And how this can be an incredibly powerful tool if we use it correctly, but at the same time can be a crusher of dreams if we don't use it in the right way. To explain this concept, I will use an analogy that I heard recently that perfectly describes this concept. If I would ask you, the last time you were out on the road, how many red cars did you see? You would probably guess that you saw a few, 
but I can guarantee you that you will not know exactly how many it was. If I now offered you a million dollars, if the next time you could tell me exactly how many red cars there was, I can 100% guarantee that you would know the answer. This is exactly how opportunities in football and life work. When we have a strong desire to succeed and a clear goal that we want to reach, we now start seeing the opportunities that otherwise would just have passed us by because we weren't paying attention. This also means that the stronger our ambition is and the clearer our goals are, the more opportunities will present themselves. Opportunities that we will then be able to jump on and move on to the next level of our careers. Number seven, embrace discomfort. Another big realization I had recently when I sat through one of these psychology sessions was that as aspiring footballers, we should all embrace discomfort. What do I mean by this? Our natural state as humans is to be comfortable and to be safe. But when we are pursuing something, that will come with certain negative emotions. Fear of failing, fear of pain, or anxiety of simply not reaching our dreams. These are feelings that all aspiring footballers will feel at some point in their careers. But what we have to understand is that these feelings are a direct result of us having high goals. And the higher we're aiming, the more of these negative emotions we'll feel. The key learning here is to not be afraid and push away those negative emotions, but instead try to accept them, embrace them, and know that because I am setting high standards and high goals for myself, that is why these emotions are there. And as long as they are there, I know that I'm going in the right direction. Number eight, technology. I've told you about the importance of training your cognitive abilities, but as we also discussed, it can be hard to be consistent in that due to numerous different reasons. That is where we can take advantage of today's technology. Technology is very quick advancing, and as footballers, this is something we can definitely take advantage of. One of these things is virtual reality. I got the chance to try it myself a few months ago, and after that, I immediately decided to invest in a VR headset. I can't even imagine where I would be had I been able to acquire something like this when I started my journey 17 years ago. In this VR headset, I've been able to train my awareness, my vision, and my decision-making in an app called Be Your Best. I've been able to train my reaction and even heading in another app called Wrestle. I've even been able to become more consistent in practicing things like meditation through certain mindfulness apps. And as this technology continues to advance as we head into the future, more and more of these apps will show up, all to help you become a better player. Number nine, journey before destination. I want to leave you with a simple but incredibly important mindset to take with you into the future. When we're pursuing a dream, it can be easy to get lost in that pursuit and just stare blindly at our end goal. I've been there myself and it's not a place that I want to go back to. Even today, I sometimes have to remind myself of a short but powerful concept. Journey before destination. It's important to strive forward and look towards the next step, but we can't forget to also enjoy the moment, because that in the end is really what it's all about. In the end, you will probably not be able to do all of these, but the more of them that you can add together, the higher your chances of success is and the quicker you'll be able to make progress in your career. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to get more content just like this. That's all for this time, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.